Hey everybody, Ryan Gronfen here with The Restaurant Boss. I want to talk to you owners and operators about your business model and why your business model might be broken as we approach a new changing economy, a world that's different than a world we've ever seen before. I'm going to use a very famous restaurant as an example here, but what I want to talk about is how our numbers slip slowly but we don't see it. It's like a puppy. When you come home every day to your puppy, you don't see them grow. But if you go out of town for a week and come back, your puppy's much bigger. Your numbers and your restaurant and your popularity and your foot traffic are very much the same. Business models don't break overnight. They break a tiny bit every couple of weeks or every couple of months. And then over a period of five years, you just all of a sudden wake up one day and realize our business is not as popular as it was. What's the problem? But the reality is the data has been trending in this direction for years. You just maybe aren't paying attention to it or maybe you're seeing it, but it's such a small slip that you chalk it up to any number of other things. But when someone from the outside looks in, it's quite obvious. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Gromfin. I'm an author, speaker, chef, restaurateur, founder of therestaurantboss.com, clickbacon.com, scalemyrestaurant.com, and author of Make It Happen. It's a little book for building a big restaurant business. Uh, go ahead, get a free copy of Make It Happen at our website, completely free. Head to therestaurantboss.com. We'll send you out a copy. All you got to do is pay a couple of dollars for shipping. So... What happens in this model is, or in this situation is, like I said, it's about the puppy. You look at your numbers and you see that you're down a little bit compared to last month. You look at your numbers and you see that your guest counts are off a tiny bit compared to last year. It's nothing major. But if you look at last year to the year before and the year before to the year before that and the year before to the year before that, if you compare maybe your sales to five years ago, well, then you might see the problem. And so today, I'm going to share with you something that I think is going to be pretty obvious to all of us, but it's an article that I got, and it kind of shocked me when I got this article, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Let's go and check that out. So I got this email on June 5th. Today is June 6th of 2024, and it says, why has Cracker Barrel suddenly lost relevancy? Well, I don't think they've suddenly lost relevancy and the data will support that. I think Cracker Barrel has been losing relevancy for five, 10, or even 20 years. But again, when we're in it, when we're part of it, we don't see what's happening here, right? They state that the numbers have proven, right, that the brand has seen double digit declines. They're down 20% since 2019. Now, down 20% since 2019, in my opinion, that's like down 40 or 50% because most restaurants are up dramatically since 2019. I mean, the amount that we eat at restaurants compared to what we used to eat at restaurants is astronomical. This brand has completely lost their way, but they'll continue to point out through this article about how they saw you know, Q4 last year down 3% or Q2 down 3%. And so again, when they look at those little numbers, it's easy to say, oh, well, it's the economy. Oh, well, it's this. Oh, well, it's that. Hey, finally, they brought in a consulting agency from the outside. I think they said here they spent $16 million in consulting fees for basically someone to tell them what I could have told them, which is a couple of things. One, your brand has completely lost relevancy. Is there a market where your brand is still relevant? Yes, but your brand has completely lost relevancy. Also, another thing they discovered is they're leaving money on the table in certain markets. They operate in such a wide range of markets that some markets are gonna be more price conscious, more price aware than other markets, and yet they're discounted, heavily discounted, very cheap, very high value pricing extends throughout the entire brand regardless of their location. So look, these guys are getting to work and I hope that they figure it out. I think Cracker Barrel has a place in the market. It just hasn't had a place in the market for a consumer like me in quite some time. 
But the reason I bring this up, and if you want, head to FSR. They do a phenomenal job. Um, they talk about what I talk about, right? There's different levers we can pull. Cracker Barrel pulls several operational levers to try to increase, um, right? So they talk here about the different levers that they're gonna pull. Um, where was it? I think they even go through like lever one, lever two, level lever three. Uh, maybe that was a different article that I was looking at, but go ahead and check out these articles. They're good articles. I think there's a lot that you can learn from them. But the point that I wanna bring up to you, the point that I wanna make to you is that I want you to take an honest assessment at your brand. Whether you're a one unit chain doing five, $600,000 a year, maybe you're a 30 or 40 unit chain doing 100 million in sales a year. I don't want you to discount what the numbers are telling you. If the numbers are telling you that your sales are flat, but you've increased prices a couple times in the last few years, then your guest counts are down dramatically. If your numbers are up a little bit, but you've increased prices, then as far as I'm concerned, your brand is basically flat because I look at guest counts. But then after you look at guest counts, look at their habits. Did they used to buy two drinks? Now they're buying one. Did they used to buy an appetizer? Now they're buying less appetizers. Did they used to buy dessert? Now they're buying less dessert. What are the buying habits? How have the buying habits changed? What consumer are you attracting? Is it the same consumer that you've always attracted? How are you keeping up with trends in the marketplace? How much renovation have you done? Have you done any renovating, right? I look at a brand like a Cheesecake Factory. I mean, when I walk into a Cheesecake Factory, it looks exactly the same as it did when I used to eat a Cheesecake Factory as a kid 25 or 30 years ago. Sooner or later, another brand is gonna come and absolutely destroy them. It's starting to happen already. When you walk into a Cracker Barrel, it's quite obvious they've made no effort to modernize their brand in 20 or 25 years. How many dollars are you putting into keeping up with trends, renovating, always looking at new equipment, always updating the way you do business? When was the last time you updated your website? When was the last time you audited your online ordering? When was the last time you put money into modernizing the decor of your restaurant? See, I work with a brand that is in New Jersey. They're a good family brand. They're in a small suburb. Uh, they do phenomenal business for their size. But every year, and I was on the phone with them earlier this week, I told them, I said, I have so much respect for you and your brand. Because every year they invest in something. A couple of years ago, they, they invested in a complete interior renovation. Last year, they invested in a lot of new equipment. This year, they're investing in a complete exterior renovation. New paint, new railings. They're redoing a lot of the wood trim on the building. Like three or four years ago, they invested in new signage. But every year, they spend a very large amount of money. I'm talking forty to eighty dollars or $100,000 a year on making sure that their brand is keeping up with trends, staying modern, staying in front of their guests, staying in front of their competition. And it pays off in spades for them. They are consistently up 20 to 25% a year. During COVID, up. After COVID, up. This year, up. And again, I think that's because they're not ignoring the fact that brands have to grow and brands have to change. So again, I hope that this allows you to look into your brand a little bit more, not simply discount your numbers, but really ask yourself, what innovations have you done and how have you kept up with your brand? Please do head to fsrmagazine.com, find one of these Cracker Barrel articles. And what I love about FSR is every one of their articles links you back to previous articles written about that brand. And what's really weird is, or what's cool is, look, I can go back to a year ago they were talking about sales, June 7, 2023. Here was an article. I can go back probably, I think when I did my research, I went back about a year and a half to where they started talking about this in like late 2022. And now here they are in 2024. And it's like, all right, we got to do something now. So don't wait that long. Check out, get a copy of our book. I think it'll help you with some really important tools and some operational things in your restaurant, head on over to the restaurantboss.com and remember 
Systems create freedom. Freedom creates value. Value creates scale. I love every single one of you crazy restaurant operators. Have an amazing day. Make It Happen is the book I wish I had when I was operating restaurants. Inside are the lessons that took me 10 years to learn and 10 more years of teaching to perfect. I've condensed the most important lessons into this tiny book for building a big restaurant business. I am on a mission to improve restaurants all over the world. Because of that, I want to send you a free copy. Grab yours today at therestaurantboss.com.